All right, hello everyone and welcome to today's video. Today I'm gonna be showing you how I take one of my pencil sketches from my sketchbook and I render them digitally to look like this. For this, I'm gonna be using Photoshop and I'm gonna be using my tablet. When I say render, it just means taking anything from its rough state into like a final realized piece of work. But I know it's a term that's usually associated with 3D. I will clarify and say that this is how I do it. A lot of times it changes. I take some liberties and I like reorder things or do things differently. It depends on the occasion. But hopefully you can take something from this and apply it to your workflow. All right, let's just get into it and get to drawing. So before we actually get to step one, I have step zero, which is to have your sketch. It's supposed to be Doja Cat, even though it doesn't look like Doja Cat, but I saw some pictures of her and I was like, you know what, I'm gonna sketch her today. But I took some like liberties in it. So now we can get to step one. Ding! All right, so step one is actually to take a photo of your sketch. Any phone with a camera will do. You know, back in the day, they would use a scanner, but I don't think we need to use those anymore. If someone out there uses a scanner, be my guest. So yeah, long story short, make sure this gets to this. And now that we have it here, I'm just gonna go ahead and drop it into Photoshop. All right, and now I'm just gonna take a new layer, make it white, lower the opacity, and that will serve as my onion skin so I can like look at the sketch underneath, but I still have, you know, a pretty clean canvas. All right, now that that's done, we can move on to step two, which is tidying your sketch. All right, so a lot of people would think step two would be to go straight into inking. And a lot of people might do that. But actually, I would strongly recommend you not to, because here's the thing. If you get to inking and your sketch is not tight enough, things can go really wrong really fast. I think tidying your sketch, it's basically minimizing the room for error. I'll explain myself. All the energy that your sketch had, like your silhouette, the pose, everything can get lost if you have like a sloppy inking. So the way to avoid, you know, your inking being sloppy, it's to make sure you have like a really tight drawing. So let's do ourselves a favor and tighten this a little bit more. I'm gonna do this in blue. And I'm gonna make sure I really find that anatomy, like double check that anatomy. All right, and one more thing that I recommend, it's for you to flip your canvas on this stage. That will help you to spot mistakes a lot quicker. When you look at something for so long, your brain gets so used to it that it stops, you know, spotting mistakes. So when you flip it, it becomes almost like a whole new drawing, and then your brain quickly can spot all the mistakes. I can already tell that the hair looks unbalanced, the pupils are a little bit off, probably I need to pull the shoulder out a little bit more. Also, I'm gonna go in and take advantage of the fact that now I can really zoom in and add a few more details that I was not able to add on my sketchbook. All right, and now that this is done, we can get to inking. I'm gonna say two things about inking. One, it's underrated, and two, people are afraid of it. Yes. I do understand that it's a process that takes a lot of work and a lot of effort and a lot of time, but I think it's worth it. And personally, I really do enjoy it. Yes, I am that kid who enjoys inking. Anyway, let's get to it. So I'm gonna create a new layer. And then for this, I'm going to use a hard brush, like simple hard brush, 100% opacity. I'm gonna make it slightly oval and I'm gonna turn on the pressure sensitivity. So it tapers the lines. I'm gonna be doing a sculpted line. That's usually my go-to. Um, so that means I'm really gonna go in and like taper those lines, add some weight to certain parts, you know. I do plan to make an inking video eventually, so if you're interested in that, let me know in the comments. But yeah, I think it's pretty self-explanatory. It just takes time, patience, and love. All right, so now that our line is ready, let's actually compare it. All right, you can clearly see that the drawing didn't lose any of its essence. The silhouette is fine, the gesture is fine. So yeah, let's just move on to step four, which is blocking. This is a pretty straightforward step. I mean, it's pretty simple. We're gonna block our shapes, which means basically we're gonna create a layer and a shape for each object or each element. So we can later on go in and color each layer individually. So basically I always start from big to small. So we're gonna start with the entire body. I like to call that my base. All right, so I'm gonna show you two options. The first one will be to take your brush and we're going to trace all around the edges, but on the inside of the line. I'm gonna quickly speed this up. And now that we're done and we have, you know, we have this shape, we're gonna use the paint bucket tool or G in Photoshop and we're gonna fill it in. 
But yes, we definitely encounter an issue, which is that line of empty pixels. We could quickly fix that by just like filling the thing again and that will get rid of the empty pixel. But at the same time, it will give us an extra pixel that goes over the edge of the line art. And we don't want that. So to avoid that, we're going to do one step before, which is to use our one tool um, or W and we're gonna select the inside. And once you have that selected, you're gonna go to select, modify, expand. Usually one or two pixels like do the job, but I'm definitely gonna need more here. And then you just like click the paint bucket tool twice. And now we're gonna have no empty pixels and no pixels overflowing. And also I'm gonna undo all of that and I'm gonna show you another way. It's definitely getting a little bit wordy, but we're trying to make sense, right? So since my lines are super clean and closed, I can go in, click outside of it with the one selection tool and you can see everything outside the illustration we selected. And now I click Command Shift I to invert the selection. Then I go to select, modify, contract this time instead of expand. I'll contract it by two pixels. So we don't have that extra pixel overflowing. And now I create a layer underneath and then just fill it in. And that's way simpler. So this is a scenario where taking time to ink actually pays off and saves you time later. And now that we have our big shape ready, I'm gonna go in and start creating like individual ones. Like I said, for the eyes, bra, hair, blah, 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 blah. And something to look out for is you want the big shape we just created to contain all the other layers we're going to create. So for that, we're gonna use a clipping mask, which means we're gonna put the layers on top of that one and we're gonna hold Alt and then that little symbol of the square with the arrow will show up, which tells you, oh, this is going to contain it. And now we have that contained. You can go in and add as many layers and as many divisions as you want. It's really up to you. All right, so I'm gonna, I'll just go in and do it. And in this step, it's not necessarily for you to use the final colors. You know, you can just block everything with random colors because the reason we're doing this, it's so later on when we want to modify colors or anything, it's going to be super easy. All right, I think this is good enough. Like this is enough layers for now. Now she's looking like a Smurfette, but I'm gonna actually go in and choose the colors that I want for each layer. And I'm gonna do it so by two different ways. One, by locking the transparency of the layer, which is this little checkered square on the top left. And when we do that, you'll see what happens. So if I paint now, you can see that it doesn't go outside. If the transparency wasn't locked, when I paint it, it would bleed into her face. But right now it's contained on the hair, right? And the other way we could do this is by using the hue and saturation effect. So you go to image, adjustments, and then hue and saturation. And the shortcut for that is command U. And then here you can just play with the sliders to adjust the hue, saturation, or lightness. These two methods, like constantly use them both. And yeah, now I'm just gonna like quickly fix everything so it is the color that I want it to be. But something that you have to keep in mind is this is not a linear process, you know? Like even though these steps, we have these steps, you're always allowed to go back and tweak things. You're always allowed to go back and improve things that you realize later on might not be working so well. And with that said, we can continue to the next step, which is shadows. All right, so I like to separate the shading in two steps, which is shadows and highlights. Highlights will be the next step. And usually what I do, it's like I do a first pass where I put like all my shadows in one layer and then all my highlights in one layer. And something that you've heard like a hundred thousand times, if not probably more, we have to choose a light source. So we're gonna put our light source up here. I like to draw a little sun. And now we're gonna create a new layer where our shadows are going to live. I'm gonna choose this sort of navy color. I don't like shading with black. And I'm gonna set the layer to multiply and lower the opacity. And now I'm just gonna go ahead and start painting where my shadows are going to be. I cannot sugarcoat this. There's like no trick or cheat to this, you know? Here's where your sense of anatomy and your sense of volume will really come into play. I also struggle with this a lot of times but for the most part, usually I think I do a pretty good job. Also, I know some people will hate this, but I remember my favorite professor in college would say, he would say this about perspective and lighting. And it's so bad, but he's so good. But he would say, it doesn't need to be correct. It just needs to feel correct. And I'm sure for at least like 90% of people, 
you can make it look correct. You know, obviously there will be like that small percentage of people who are like experts at the topic and you cannot fool those people, but you can probably fool the rest of the world. However, I do encourage you to like learn your principles. And before I move forward, I'm gonna create a second layer that I'm gonna pretend it's my second shadow layer. And I'm gonna use this layer to bring in some sort of like gradients to it, you know? And for this, I use like a very soft airbrushy brush. All right, so the shadows are not perfect yet, but you guys get the idea and you can spend as much time as you want here, or you can come back later like I will. But for now, let's just move on to step six and start adding highlights. All right, so highlights are really good to one, make things pop, you know, like when you add that layer of like highlights, it really brings all that contrast and like all those values, if you do it properly. This will make a huge difference in your drawing. So for that, let's just create a new layer again. I'm going to set the blending mode to color dodge. You can always like play with the blending modes and choose whichever you like best. But for now, I'm gonna go with this one. And then yeah, so let's just do the thing. And now for this, we're gonna repeat the same process we did with the shadows, but obviously now the opposite. This time you're gonna be thinking, what are the parts that really catch the light? And I think like a really good tip for beginners, it's like to think you're gonna have a highlight in most cases, opposite to a shadow. So that's like a simple way for you to think about it. Obviously there are always exceptions to the rule, but you know. And I'm going to repeat the same thing I did with the shadows where I create a second layer and I take a very soft brush and I start adding like a few, you know, very gradient-like spots. And you can already tell how different it looks. Like here's before highlights and now with highlights. Yeah, it's a huge difference. Depending on the style you're looking for, this could be good enough. You know, you have highlights, you have shadows, you have color, you should have like clean lines maybe. So this is a great spot to be, but we're gonna continue going. You know, I have like one or maybe two more steps to go. So yeah, let's go to step seven. And then this step, I labeled it recoloring the outline and blending. But I would say this step, it's mostly to polish the whole thing and start adding like the details that you wanna add. So basically, yeah, I'm going to recolor the outline, do some blending, and add a few more details. So let's go. To recolor the outline, I'm gonna use the log transparency feature that we used earlier. And I'm gonna go in and paint the lines a tone darker than the inside. Also, if you wanna go for a lineless look, you could achieve that by painting the lines the same color as the inside, and that will give you some sort of lineless look. This is pretty straightforward, so I'm just gonna like jump straight into finishing it, here it is. And this already adds like a lot of volume and a lot of depth because when you have like a black uniform line, that really flattens the whole drawing. All right, and with that said, you guys have the steps and the ideas. So now I'm gonna quickly go and fully concentrate on this, probably revisit all of my previous steps and blend it a little bit more. And once I'm done with that, I'm gonna come back and show you guys how to really take it, you know, to a more professional and like polished level. So let me get into this and I'll see you in a bit. So now that I went in and I gave this illustration the love and care that it needed, I fixed the shadows, I fixed the highlights, I fixed the line work a little bit more, I blended things, I added more color to it. And now I'm gonna show you two more quick things. So one, when you have a photo, not everything is in focus. So I'm gonna add some blur to this. So it creates that like sense of realism. So let's go ahead and like flatten everything and then duplicate our layer. And then I'm gonna go to filter, blur, lens blur. And I'm gonna set the radius to five. And then we're gonna create a mask and I'm going to reveal what's underneath. And that's making it look like the face, it's on focus, and then the surroundings are like a little bit blurry. And then the second bonus that I'm gonna do, it's to give it some noise. Usually I like to use like a more like charcoal pastel brush, but in this case, I use a simple brush. It definitely has that digital quality to it, which is not bad, but I'm not a fan of. So I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate it. And on that duplicate, I'm going to go to filter, noise, and then add noise for its fine. And then that noise to me brings that film-like quality that I really enjoy. And I don't know, to me overall, it looks like more professional, more polished. And then yes, let's just put it together with the original sketch. 
So we can see a comparison side by side, huge difference. And we're done for today. So if you like this video, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. I really hope you learned something and will be able to incorporate some of this into your own workflow. I repeat, this is just like a loose template for you to follow. You know, you can like tweak it, change it, reorder it, go back and forth, make mistakes, change things, edit, crap it. That's completely okay. If you know of any other tricks, leave them in the comments. I would love to hear them. If you want to find me outside of here, you can find me on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. Here they are. And that's it. I will see you in the next one.